Now we're going to talk about the MCP or mode control panel. Also, we will talk about the EFIS control panel. So the MCP, we're going to set the course. In this case, it's 299, because we're taking off from runway 30 right in Dubai, and 299 is a runway heading. And then we'll select the flight director switches on, and the pilot flying selects first his flight director switch. I'm flying, I will select the flight director switch on. When we put this switch on, we will see the flight director uh, indication in the PSD. In the IFIS control panel, we'll select with the minimum reference selector the acceleration altitude. In Dubai, after we do the performance, we will get 862, and that's what we are going to set here. And with the barometric reference selector, we'll set the altimeter setting. In this case, it's set to 1013. Next is the oxygen test and check. And we talked about this before in our previous videos. So I'm going to leave a link uh, somewhere here and you can go there and check how this is done. After the oxygen test is completed, we'll go and check the clock and set it properly. And then we go to the display select panel here and we check the main panel DU is in normal position and the lower DU is in normal position. And then we move to the disengage light test switch and we have two positions here. Now, this is a difference between the simulator and the airplane. When we select position one and hold it, all these lights should be amber. When we hold it in position two, only the FMC light should be amber. Now, we check that the flight instruments are set and the only two flags we can see now, it's no V-speed and take us off. Here in the simulator, we don't see the take us off, but it should be here. We'll check that the auto throttle mode is blank, roll mode blank, and the pitch mode is blank. Now we move to the ground proximity panel, and here we have to check that the flap inhibit, the gear inhibit, and the terrain inhibit, the switches guards are closed and we'll make sure the GPWS in up light is extinguished. We check the landing gear panel, landing gear lever in the down position, and we check that the nose gear, left gear, and right gear green lights are illuminated, and the red lights are extinguished. Auto brake select switch in the RTO position, and then we should see the auto brake disarm light illuminating for two seconds and then extinguishing. We'll make sure the anti skid in up light is extinguished. Then we'll check the engine display control panel. Here we want to see the N1 set in the auto position and the speed reference in the auto position. We'll go to the fuel flow rate uh, switch. We'll move it to a reset and then back to rate. Now we will check the engine instruments and we'll check that the primary and secondary indications are normal. We have no exceedances and then we check the hydraulic quantity is good for the flight and it's not showing RF, which is refill. Okay, now it's time to talk about the cargo fire panel check. We cannot do this in the sim. So I did this presentation for you guys. And let's read what it says. It says, this check is needed once per flight day. Detector select switch is normal. So we have them here, normal and normal. Test switch, push, we'll push this switch here. And what we are going to see here and here is the fire warning bell sounds. And we'll verify that the master fire warning lights are illuminated. So we'll see these two lights illuminating. And it will be something like this. This is the fire bell, and then we'll see these two lights illuminating. We'll push the master fire one light, and once we do it, we'll verify that the master fire one lights are extinguished. We'll verify that the fire warning bell cancels. Verify that the green extinguisher test lights stay illuminated, these two lights. Verify that the forward and aft cargo fire warning lights stay illuminated, these two lights. 
and verify that the detector fault light stayed extinguished. We don't want to see this light illuminated. And verify that the discharge light stays illuminated, which is this, this one here. Uh, also, we cannot show you in the simulator about the hot system. I will try to do a video in the future about this system so we can understand a little bit more about it. But we have to set it as needed. Let's continue with the video. Then we go and check the radio tuning panels are set. The VHF navigation radios are set for departure. We'll check the audio control panel is set. The ADF panel set. The way the radar panel is set. The transponder panel is set. And then the stop trim override switch in the guarded position. And then guys, we will finish our pre-flight procedure adjusting our seat, our daughter pedals, our seat belts and trolling harnesses. Stay tuned for the next video. We will be talking about the captain's pre-flight procedure.